Video games should be more accessible. Dark Souls needs an easy mode. No, it doesn't. Get good. Enemy fighters coming at you, Fox. Here they come. These guys just keep coming. Man, there's just no end to these guys. Surprise attack coming from above. Watch out, Fox. They're everywhere. Hold them. They're trying to get through. Move it, Fox. He's right behind you. Fire! Fire! Don't let him through. Never give up. Trust your instincts. Don't ever give up, my son. It's a conversation that tends to pop up anytime From Software is about to release a new title. But it's not exclusive to them. There seems to be a group that's getting louder and louder asking for accessibility and difficulty options. Stuff that allows people of all skill levels to play and enjoy any game. Now, this series of tweets by Tamur Hussein is what sparked my desire to touch on this subject. Touch on it with my moonlight greatsword if you get my drift. <laughs> But hold on, I can't do this video proper justice without putting up my Dark Souls disc plates, the sponsor of today's video. And look, they even got one of me. I sense your lack of humanity, chosen undead. It stems from not having enough display posters on your wall. Take a look at these bad boys. You think anyone doubts I'm an epic gamer when I got these on my wall? Forget about it. These high quality metal made posters come in three different sizes and with over 1.4 million designs available on the website. Mounting them on your wall? Pfft, easier than fighting the asylum demon. You simply peel this sticker, place it where you want, hold for five seconds, do the same with the magnet, and then presto, humanity restored. For every display sold, they plant one tree and you're also supporting the channel. What's not to love? There's a little something for everyone with displates. So order some. By using the link in the description and pinned comment, you'll get 27% off one to two displates and 37% off three or more. Thank you, Displate, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. I hate when From Software's games are cited in arguments against making games accessible or even easier. The first problem you should see here is the bogus framing. Nobody uses From Software games to try and prove why Doom Eternal should only have one difficulty setting. You have it backwards. People point to From Software's games and say this is why From Software's games should have one difficulty. Unless you are physically or mentally incapable of playing video games at all, let's not toss around this bullshit idea that difficult and inaccessible are two words that mean the same thing. For your consideration, I will now put the relevant synonyms up on screen. What part of being moved by the ambience of Firelink Shrine depends on it being difficult to the point where it's inaccessible for some to play? Cut that last part off and you have an amazing question. The harsher the desert, the more satisfying the oasis. The power of Firelink Shrine's tone and ambience comes from the relief you feel by being there. The relief you feel is caused by the brutal harsh conditions you feel outside of it. This is the place where most sane people go to get away from all that shit. I am safe here. Nothing can hurt me unless I attack this guy, which I always do. If dying of thirst, being attacked by bandits, or freezing to death are not constant risks in the desert, then I ask you, what makes an oasis special? To more, your question only solidifies why Dark Souls difficulty is perfect the way it is. Excusing the bullshit, of course. But this is why the bonfires became such an iconic piece of imagery. They represent hope. Are you saying the heartbreaking story of Artorius and Sif is only meaningful because you smashed up some tree monsters in a way that others can't? Why do you need to defeat hard enemies and bosses to experience that same emotional gut punch of understanding the story? Okay, let's be real. If you can't beat the tree monsters, you're not going to be able to beat Sif. Tamor, I know you're trying to make a point with these dumb rhetorical questions, but I'm going to give you some real answers you probably weren't expecting. Artorius is a tragic character because you fight him in his weaker form. The dude is using a greatsword with one hand. You know how much strength you need to do that? He's been corrupted by the darkness. So when you hear characters talk about how Artorius was this legendary knight, you think, 
Holy shit, what was he like at full power? You're meant to ask, if this absolute unit fell to the darkness of the abyss, what fucking chance do I have? It raises the stakes and makes the abyss something truly terrifying. The story of Artorius isn't meaningful because they're just tough bosses. That's just what makes it more significant. Get a grip. Give every single From Software game an easy mode for all I care. If they want to do it, let them make it so anyone and everyone can play them. Those that argue otherwise are not real fans of those games or From Soft. Just gatekeepers. What's that? You say you have well thought out and valid opinions on this matter? Well, I don't care. I'm not gonna listen to them. You're not a real fan, since you think differently than I do. You know, I wanted to take a more respectful tone in responding to Tamora's tweets, but who's the one gatekeeping here? What makes you the adjudicator on who's a real fan or not? No one will force you to make it easier for yourself. I'm gonna repeat this part of your tweet for emphasis. Nobody will force you to make it easier for yourself. Exactly, Harry. Exactly. Only you can beat Dark Souls. From Software is not going to make it easier for you. Nobody can force you to get good. You are the master of your destiny. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. You act like we all didn't get our cheeks clapped by the Capra Demon, or the Bed of Chaos was a walk in the park. It wasn't. I don't mean to pick on Tamor, I got nothing against the guy personally, it's just I see these same points echoed in the voices of others, and it breeds a buttload of toxicity. If you want to have a conversation about difficulty and accessibility in From Software's games, why are you closing the doors on other people's opinions? By doing that, you are only embracing ignorance. You can go on with your life telling everyone how you beat the hard boss and everyone will continue to not care. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of others will finally be able to experience what they, from software, offer in their totality. Yes, but actually no. That is simply not true. You would experience a butchered, neutered version of the game. A version from software not only doesn't want to make, but doesn't want you to play. A Souls game without the difficulty might as well be a racing game without the racing. But there's also a lot of people who genuinely wonder, why does it matter? How does it affect you, Act Man? Don't worry. Ask, and I will answer. Should the Souls games have an easy mode or accessibility features? The short answer is no. <laughs> because it already has one. And hey, that's coming from the guys who did the Demon Souls remake. But before I elaborate, Welcome to my TED Talk on what it means for a game to be accessible. Because the more people that can play and enjoy something, the better it is, right? Were it so easy. There are a metric assload of video games in the world. Different genres, separate styles, they vary in length and challenge. The diversity in this industry is infinite. But you can't always please everyone. Some companies like Activision want their products to appeal to as many people as possible, while others are satisfied making games for a smaller niche audience. Both are completely fine. It all depends on what the developer's goals are. If you already have a fan base, it can be tough to experiment. Halo 4 copied many things from Call of Duty thinking it would capture some of that audience. But it didn't. They just went back to Call of Duty. That comes with the territory of any business. Who are you marketing to? Would you be surprised if I told you that fans of Star Wars are much more likely to buy a Star Wars video game than people who aren't fans? I don't believe it! Even if you have the most specific needs, I guarantee there's something out there for everyone. Just like IGN says. It is a little something for everyone. My point is if you don't like seeing Nazis in a World War II video game, don't fucking buy a World War II video game. Go play something else. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Games should be accessible in the sense that you shouldn't have to spend 70 hours in Battlefront 2 before you can play as Darth Vader. A game should literally be playable at the time you buy it. But Star Wars games don't have to be accessible to people that aren't fans of Star Wars. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't have a clue what you're talking about, Phil. Not a fucking clue. Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Elden Ring. None of these titles have ever needed or would be better off with an easy mode. And the reason why is that goes against the very foundation of this franchise. Its identity, the community, and the game's mechanics. An easy mode betrays the very tone and atmosphere that From Software is aiming to establish. 
one of oppressive circumstances in a weak character battling against the odds. That's where the satisfaction and joy comes from, conquering those challenges. Which is why the designers often put you up against a tough boss at the beginning. Death and failure are part of the gameplay, but they're also intrinsic to the story. It's literally in the title of Sekiro. How about we head back to where it all began? Demons of Souls. Oh boy, this kicked everyone's ass their first time playing. And me too, I was sitting there like, how the hell do I beat the Flame Lurker? Where the shit do I get materials to upgrade my gear? What is World Tendency? Why is half my health bar missing? What the fuck? But you know what I did when I had trouble? When I couldn't figure out what to do or where to go? I sought help. Wait, that's illegal. Stop it. Get some help. Yes, from the internet and the game. I started paying attention to the bloodstains. How did other players die in this area? How can I avoid that? I read messages on the ground warning me of hidden enemies or pointing me to secret items. Success! Try fist. Try tongue, but whole. And eventually I mastered and beat Demon Souls, and 10 years later I did it again. Let me make it clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking people tips or looking up a guide. I think you should only do that when absolutely necessary. Like, after dying to the Dragon God for the seventh time, it's like, okay, fuck it, just tell me how to beat this asshole. Souls games are built around community interaction. The difficulty encourages discussion and engagement. Oh, how did you beat Ornstein and Smoke? What weapons did you use? Where did you find those? Really, the best armor in the game is in Anor Orlando, huh? Oh, and I can also summon Solaire for this fight? I should try that. I'll admit these titles can be way harder if you don't have an internet connection, but even so, the developers leave messages and you can summon NPCs without it. What people like Tamora are asking for is a menu option that they click at the start and instantly make the rest of the game easier. This franchise that's based entirely on trial and error difficulty as an homage to old school games, this series that emphasizes difficulty and boss fights above everything else, well I don't want to figure shit out, I don't want to make the game easier for myself, I want you to do that for me. Now, not everyone who believes Dark Souls should have an easy mode thinks like that, but I reckon some people are coming at this from an entitled point of view. If you desire an easy mode, then why are you playing these games at all? You came for demon souls. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed proletaria. Difficulty settings are perfect for most franchises. But that's the whole point of the Souls series, there's one bar, one set experience that everyone plays through. Same enemies, same locations, same health, damage, everything. And you know the old phrase, get good? While mostly used in a trolley sense, it actually has some truth here. Learn the mechanics of the game, understand how you can make your life easier. No matter my previous experience with From Software titles, every time a new one drops, I think I'm hot shit and I get my ass kicked like everybody else. It's about effort. People want to be rewarded for doing as little as possible. That's not how Dark Souls works. The satisfaction comes from the difficulty. Blue Point Games themselves posted 180 different help videos for Demon Souls. If you're struggling, then do something about it. Oh, magic conch shell. What do we need to do to beat the nameless king? Nothing. The shell has spoken! Nothing. We can't just sit here and do nothing. Otherwise, you're gonna go hollow. Don't you dare go hollow. There's already an easy difficulty. It's called a sorcery build. You can cheese everything from afar. Try it. Dark Souls has countless difficulty modifiers built into it. Some I've just described, like summoning phantoms. You can grind souls to level your character, upgrade your equipment, kindle bonfires for more estus and healing, use some of those consumable items, experiment with different builds. God forbid you get stuck somewhere and try going to a different area. The games let you do that, you know? You know, stuff like running to the new Londo ruins right away to grab a firekeeper soul to permanently boost how good your Estus and healing is, that's a tip to help new players get better. 
All the information you need to beat and master these games is out there. And it's because they're so fair that that's entirely possible that doing the effort and research will drastically improve your success. And some people have gone like the story and art style route, like people should be able to appreciate that even if they can't beat the game. It's like, bro, you gotta spend time to learn what the story's about too. You think that shit's accessible? My boy Vati must have put in thousands of hours just to get people to understand it. And if you're not willing to put forth the effort to beat a boss, why should you be rewarded with the bits of story that come along with it? But okay, how would an easy mode work? Let's think about this. Because now we have to completely change every aspect of the game, which poses new challenges for the developers. So, you know how Call of Duty used to have a playlist called Boot Camp where only people like level 10 and under could play in it? Well, they ended up scrapping that in later games because too many people would go in on Smurf accounts and just completely ruin the experience. What's stopping people from twinking, smurfing, and invading players in easy mode? Ah, oh, just get rid of the PvP and then there's no problem. Really? You want to toss out the entire multiplayer component. You see how the easy mode is just cutting out content from the game itself? Like, what the fuck is the point of Solaire now? Now we have to change the story and Solaire's role in it <laughs> in the easy mode. I would say here's a white soapstone, go join up in jolly cooperation, but you picked easy mode. And you're a little bitch. Okay, you say, well let's keep the jolly cooperation, but prevent hostile invaders. All right, well, now you've just separated the player base to appease a group of people who can't be fucked to learn the game's mechanics in the first place. So you might as well just play in offline mode if that's the case. Oh hey, you mind telling me how covenants are gonna work now? Because those are relying on PvP. You talk about how much you want to experience the story, but now we're cutting chunks of that out too. So now we're in a situation where you either cut out the PvP entirely, or you keep it and you let people in the easy mode get absolutely destroyed. It's apparent to anyone who's actually played these games that if you sit down and try to think through the logistics of an easy mode, in five minutes you should realize what an absolute disaster it would be. But people asking for it haven't done that. Why are you so confident? You don't know what you're talking about. You see, the excuse that this doesn't affect you if you don't choose to use it, it doesn't hold up under scrutiny. Because no matter what, you have to separate the player base. And let's say you have an easy mode. What happens when a player's like, damn, turns out this is too easy. You gonna give people the option to change difficulties mid playthrough? I don't think so. Guess that guy's gotta restart. So let's say FromSoft wants to go back and reprogram Dark Souls with an easy mode. Those two archers in Anne Orlando, what do we do with them? Lower the knockback on the arrows? Probably get rid of them entirely. How do you make the bed of chaos easier? Go back and program it not to attack as much? Maybe keep the tiles from falling? Alright, what about these wheelie bastards? Well, you can't just lower their damage, you gotta make them stun less. What about items and locations that aren't easy to find? You want new players to find these things too, right? We gonna put down a sign in Firelink that says, hey, go, go sit in the nest for 15 seconds. I could give you 20 minutes worth of examples. Asking for an easy mode is basically asking from software to make two separate games because changing numbers doesn't change the mechanics. There's just far too many problems that arise. And that's besides the fact that Dark Souls would not have the popularity, the fan base, or the reputation it does if it came with an easy mode. Imagine a world where comparing Dark Souls to everything is something that people don't do. But the most important part of all of this, if From Software added an easy mode, it would rob the player of the experience they are intended to have. It would trivialize the game, the sense of accomplishment, the challenges. But don't take my word for it, hear it from Miyazaki himself. We don't want to include a difficulty selection because we want to bring everyone to the same level of discussion and the same level of enjoyment. So we want everyone to first face that challenge and to overcome it in some way that suits them as a player. We want everyone to feel that sense of accomplishment. We feel if there's different difficulties that's going to segment and fragment the user base. People will have different experiences based on different difficulty level. By not shilling to a larger audience from software shows that they are committed to their core fans. What I'm trying to get across is video games and indeed all media should not have to sacrifice their identity just so more people can feel like, oh, I can enjoy this thing. And some people are going to label me as a toxic gatekeeper, but okay. I think Dead Space should have 
a less scary option, where the necromorphs are more cartoony and they talk like SpongeBob. Hi, how are you? I think we should discard the whole rating system. It's too discriminatory. Every game should be rated E for everyone so that we have the most accessibility. And then everyone can enjoy this scary horror game that's no longer scary and doesn't provide the intended experience. If something feels inaccessible to you, then perhaps you should reflect on your own taste and ask, is this really for me? When I played Civilization V, I went to the tutorial, the part one tutorial. After spending 20 minutes in it, I still had no idea what I was doing. I didn't get it. That's okay, this game's not for me, I don't hate it. But I think this topic of making the difficulty easier is actually distracting from the real conversation of making games more accessible. Let's not roadblock people with a paywall or demand they grind exorbitant amounts of time. Developers and companies should spend more time focusing on making the game literally playable for people with disabilities. Again, you don't have to take my word for it, hear it from Donovan Cryptaddy. The debate on difficulty options for disabled people every time a new popular game is about to come out is distracting from corporations that should be focusing on figuring out different slash cheaper accessible controllers so they can play like everyone else, no matter the settings. Accessibility should be attained through remappable keys. The original Dark Souls port wasn't accessible to PC players because they kept the fucking Xbox 360 button inputs. Um, okay, we're gonna have a lot of trouble. We can press every button. <laughs> okay, fucking not that button. Okay, what it will press the button. It was Q. You know, things like offering subtitles in different languages, clear tutorials, a colorblind mode. That sort of thing. At the end of the day, I mostly agree that video games should offer a variety of difficulty options and challenges. However, unless you want to make the game more challenging, this is specifically not the case with Souls games. And really, it is up to the developers. If they want to have one set difficulty, one set experience, that's totally fine. But From Software's titles have challenge and difficulty as the cornerstone of their identity. Asking them to throw that away is simply discouraging you from becoming a better player. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. But what do you think? Agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. And subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. Alright everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!